Well, y'all, thank you for coming. Uh, Josie McDaniel Burkett, thank you for being here with us. We have a number of folks who will, will answer questions and present some information. I want to say this is going to be a, a pretty bad storm uh, in the upper part of the state, uh, notably from Anderson, Greenville, Spartanburg, on over to Rock Hill, sort of in that area. Uh, the good news is it'll be coming on the, on the weekend, and we have a, a holiday on Monday, MLK Day, so the schools will be closed, be a lot of offices closed then. So there should be less traffic on the road, and, and so that's, a, that's good because there's going to be a lot of ice on those roads. And I don't need to remind everybody how dangerous ice can be because often you can't tell it's there. But once you start sliding, you, you're, in, you're in deep trouble. So we'd say, everybody, we are prepared, as you will hear in a minute. This, the team has been through everything together over the years many times. We've had people working out for several days, getting set up and ready for the ice and all the, the wind, there'd be high winds. Sometimes the bucket cups will not be able to go up because of the winds. So that means some of us go be uh, pretty much stranded at home. So have your flashlights ready, uh, have whatever you need ready, uh, stay home. For those who need to get on the roads, be very, very careful, but uh, try to stay home. And there may be some places where we'll be out of power for three or four days. So it's going to be serious, but we could not be more pre prepared than we are right now. And to start to give us the overview, John Quirello of the National Weather Service will provide some weather details. John. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Uh, the National Weather Service has high confidence that a major winter storm will bring significant impacts to the uh, parts of the state, including the upstate, uh, most of the Midlands and PD later tonight and on Sunday. The National Weather Service has issued uh, winter storm or ice storm warnings for all of the upstate and northern Midlands with winter weather advisories for the central Midlands, PD, and parts of the central Savannah River area. If you're under a warning, you need to be prepared for significant impacts from either snow or ice accumulations. Travel will become extremely dangerous. Numerous trees and power lines are likely to be downed where significant ice accumulations occur. Power outages are likely, some may last days. If you're under an advisory, you should still be prepared for hazardous travel conditions and for scattered power outages. The latest forecast indicates as much as one to two inches of snow along the I-85 corridor with as much as six to eight inches of snow possible in the South Carolina mountains. Freezing rain accumulations could be as high as two to three tenths of an inch with isolated amounts up to one half inch, with the greatest ice accumulations across parts of the upstate and northern Midlands. The greatest impacts will generally begin late tonight, with freezing rain beginning to transition into rain from the south and east across the Midlands and PD late Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. It should also be noted that strong winds with gusts of 25 to 35 miles an hour, and even up over 40 miles an hour in some parts of the upstate will only compound the hazardous impacts of this storm. The threat for winter weather will come to an end across the state Sunday evening, but there is the potential for some black ice Monday morning where temperatures do fall below freezing. As in any winter weather event, small changes in temperature or other factors could result in changes in precipitation type and accumulations. As a result, we ask everyone to stay aware of the latest forecast for any potential changes. More information is available at weather.gov. Thank you. Thank you. And just uh, to remind everybody, it only takes about a quarter of an inch of ice on a power line to bring that power line down. So it, and we know we're going to have a lot of power out uh, during this period. Director Kim Stinson, Emergency Management Division. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, SCEMD is working closely with the uh, county emergency managers, state partners, and the National Weather Service to respond to this event. Team South Carolina has had many experiences uh, in the recent past preparing for, responding to, and recovering from disasters. And that's uh, over the past several years, and this is our greatest strength uh, as a team. Uh, the governor has activated the uh, state emergency operations plan, which allows us to coordinate the activities and the resources uh, of over 50 state agencies and voluntary organizations. We have developed a separate winter weather plan 
which outlines specific responsibilities uh, for responding to this uh, type of event and we exercise that plan in November with, uh, with all our partners. We will activate the state emergency operations plan uh, tonight, uh, this evening, uh, to conduct the necessary coordination with the uh, local authorities and state agencies. Uh, we are conducting uh, daily conference calls with the, uh, with the county local authorities uh, to provide overall situational awareness and identify any unmet needs or, uh, or issues. So far, we've only had one staffing request, uh, which we're uh, working to source, uh, but that's all we've received so far. But we can expect uh, additional staffing requests, as well as requests for transportation uh, and degree uh, generators and debris clearance. Uh, just as we're preparing uh, for this potential uh, or the potential impacts of this storm, we ask South Carolina Carolinians to do the same. And residents should review their uh, personal safety plans and consider actions that they would need to take in advance of this event, uh, including not traveling if you don't have to. Uh, the governor's already mentioned that. Would also uh, mention that if you lose power, uh, make sure you have another means to stay warm safely. Uh, any heaters are properly vented, and any generators are being used outside to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning because that has been a real problem in the past, uh, not just here in South Carolina, but nationwide. Um, and then uh, lastly, we would encourage uh, all residents uh, to visit our website at scemd.org and then also download our app, the South Carolina Emergency Manager app, both of which have a uh, wealth of information for individuals, families, and businesses uh, in preparing for any emergency, uh, not just this one, but it certainly includes this one. And then I just also mentioned that on our website, uh, you can uh, download our winter weather guide, which gives you all sorts of great tips on how to get prepared and how to get through winter weather. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Director Watt, Robert Woods, Department of Public Safety. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. The Department of Public Safety has completed planning and preparations for traffic incident response operations and has coordinated with all of our support agencies that includes the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, South Carolina Department of Transportation, and the South Carolina National Guard. Our focus of effort will be in the, those areas that are expected to be impacted most heavily by the winter storm, and we will be assigning additional law enforcement personnel from those agencies as well as within the Department of Public Safety, Highway Patrol, and State Transport Police to those areas as well as making use of additional specialized equipment from the National Guard and the Department of Transportation, in particular uh, wreckers from both of those uh, organizations, which are going to be pre-staged along uh, interstate corridors to give us the opportunity or the ability, I should say, to rapidly clear travel lanes when they need to be cleared. <clears throat> we'll begin our operations in the morning at 5 o'clock. That's just a target time. We're prepared to, to start at any time before then if conditions warrant, and we will run those operations through the duration of the event in our troops in the Midlands, upstate, and then the PD area. We'll also staff the Emergency Operations Center as well as our statewide command post in order to maintain sufficient command control and communications during the operation. Sir, that's all I have. Thank you very much. And as Director Wood said, we'll be wide open 24 hours a day in constant communication with, with each other to stay ahead of this. Uh, Secretary Christy Hall, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. South Carolina DOT is, uh, we've completed all of our uh, advance work in, uh, ahead of the storm. We actually began preparing in uh, this past Wednesday. We have at least two good coats of uh, uh, brine material on our key roadways, which will help keep those roadways from freezing as the storm moves through the area. We've pre-positioned more than 2,600 uh, forces into the uh, projected impact area so that we can quickly respond and recover from this expected event. Uh, we have placed more than 1 million gallons of brine material across the state on those key roads, and we have uh, more, close to 300,000 uh, 300, gallons of de-icing material on hand as well to help break up that ice once it arrives. We
We also have 60,000 tons of salt on hand and more than 1,100 pieces of equipment poised and ready to react to this event. So not only have we been preparing for days for this event, but we have also added some things to the toolbox that we traditionally have not done here in South Carolina. You heard Director Woods mention the record service. That's something new that we added to our toolbox this year to supplement the SHIP responders that we typically have in the area. So we have 62 vehicles specifically assigned to clear incidents along our interstates and our key routes, which is incredibly important because once a vehicle breaks down on the road, whether it uh, encounters a mechanical issue or a rough patch of ice, it's incredibly important that we help get that vehicle cleared and get those folks to safety. We also have pre-positioned uh, contractors to help us on a recovery effort. That's something new that we added to the toolbox this year as well. Uh, trying to get uh, ahead of the storm, actually well ahead of the storm, so that once it passes that we're able to quickly get the roads reopened uh, once we have these trees start falling on the highways. As you heard from some of the other speakers, we are expecting a significant number of trees and power lines to fall across the roads. Once this storm starts to move in, driving conditions will become very hazardous. And we are recommending that you extremely limit your travel and avoid travel if at all possible due to these hazardous driving conditions. Not only is the ice and the other winter weather of concern as well as the black ice, but it's the trees and the power lines that we are expecting to come down to, to create these road closures that is a special concern to us going forward. We will do everything that we can to keep these roads reopened and keep everything safe, but we ask for your help. Motoring public, please stay home and avoid travel if at all possible. Governor. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Van McCarty, National Guard. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the soldiers and the airmen of the South Carolina National Guard, along with all the support elements of the military department, have been working since earlier this week to prepare ourselves for this winter storm. Uh, we've been working closely with the Department of Public Safety and the Department of Transportation to identify the, the resources of the Guard that may be necessary. Uh, we have uh, 14 vehicle recovery teams that have been uh, brought on orders now to support uh, what uh, Secretary Hall mentioned as uh, uh, commercial uh, heavy wrecker teams. We will be assisting those in the Department of Public Safety at critical points along the interstates of the upstate. Uh, if the conditions are more severe and are of longer length than we're anticipating, the Guard has additional resources that can be brought in to support recovery operations, debris cleaning, and other functions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Nanette Edwards. Office of Regulatory Staff. Um, thank you, Governor. The South Carolina Office of Regulatory Staff has been uh, coordinate, coordinating closely with all of our state utilities. Um, those state utilities have been gathering materials and resources and preparing for this winter event. We do, as has been stated before, we do expect power outages. So it's important that if you are a medical needs customer and you must have power, then please do seek alternative arrangements. Um, additionally, uh, we have on occasion seen where there are scams. So if you are a customer and you get a call saying we will disconnect your services, um, please do not send money. The utilities during inclement weather they suspend disconnection of services. So please do not respond to such a request. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> well, as you can tell, we are prepared. We're, we're as prepared for this as we've ever been and actually have some, have more, more talent on the field than, than we had before. So we are ready, but I would emphasize or re-emphasize, we know the power's gonna go out in some places and we know it's gonna stay out. It could be for two or three days. So the you know, the linesman can't get up there and, and fix things when the wind's blowing too much. And uh, the, many of the roads could be down, could be closed. So if, uh, if you're right in the area where the storm's going to hit the worst, you might be home for several days without power. So we need to prepare for the time to prepare for that. It's not then, but now. So look at those maps. Uh, stay listening to official sources and also what Ms. Edwards said, be, be wary of scam people. They come out uh, like cockroaches during times like this, and they'll try to cheat and fool people out of money and everything else. But the power companies 
neither the co-ops, Duke, or Dominion, none of them will be disconnecting anybody's power during the, this, this time. So let's be safe, be careful, and because it is, is coming. Are there any questions? I just have one question. I understand you said that a lot of the upper part of the state and there are different parts that will be hit harder than down here in the Midlands. Right. What should people be concerned about down here if they're more or less saying, well, it's going to hit upstate? Like, shouldn't they be concerned as well just in case? Because obviously, you know, the weather does what it does. Well, we ho hope for the best and prepare for the worst. It does, does not seem we're going to have all those outages in the Midlands, but that could change, you know, how the weather is. You can't predict it. But uh, the, the maps and the information that's available predict where it's going to hit the hardest. That doesn't mean that it, there won't be uh, some, some serious disruptions in other places. So I would say all the way from the Midlands, all the way up, you got to be careful and, and be ready. John, would you like to add uh, to that uh, some specificity? Yes, sir. So yeah, uh, even though we expect the greatest impacts to be in the Northern Midlands and the upstate, uh, even here in the Central Midlands and the Columbia area, certainly we'll have some impacts. We'll have some freezing rain. We expect to see that uh, late tonight and into the morning. Uh, you know, the freezing rain might only last a few hours, but that might be just enough to put a glaze on the roadways, to cause some branches to come down, to result in some power outages. So certainly good for anyone that I mentioned in either an advisory or a warning to take it seriously. You know, it's, it's a weekend, plan to spend time indoors, prepare today for, you know, the potential of losing power. Um, and, and really just stay home until the event clears. I mean, we're fortunate that by tomorrow afternoon, a lot of areas will start seeing warmer weather come back in, and the ice should start melting in parts of the PD and Midlands. Conditions will stay bad, though, we think, up toward the upstate and the northern Midlands uh, through much of the afternoon. So if we get through the morning tomorrow, we think conditions will start to improve in the afternoon. Uh, but, you know, really everyone should be, should be prepared for this. And stay tuned to official sources, because a lot of times it's more dangerous out there than it, than it might look. Any more questions? When do we expect the weather to warm up? Well, we'll get down uh, many areas, obviously, below freezing at some point late tonight. And then um, tomorrow, a warm front actually starts to lift up. So we'll start seeing those temperatures start warming from coastal areas and southern areas first, and then that warmer air spreading uh, north and west uh, across uh, parts of the state tomorrow. So in the afternoon, we will see temperatures warming um, you know, here in parts of the Midlands into the 40s and, and, and other parts of the state warmer than that as you get closer to the coast. Um, so we'll warm up tomorrow. We'll get down to freezing again in many areas, especially north and west of I-20 uh, 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 Sunday night. And then we'll see some sunshine on Monday, but it's going to be a cool day. Um, so really the, the biggest concern for us is tomorrow uh, through the morning and, and into the afternoon hours in, in many areas. And I do also want to point out that Winter weather forecasting is very difficult. It just, all you have to do is change the temperature one to two degrees to really result in different impacts. You know, freezing rain to rain, snow to freezing rain. Um, so everyone um, really needs to be prepared. Even if you're on kind of the border of the freezing rain to rain, you know, be, be prepared in all those areas for some modifications. And that's why we want everyone to stay aware of what's going on, pay attention to the local news or, or use the weather service as a source um, through tonight and into tomorrow um, so you're not caught off guard in case, you know, air mess is a little bit colder or a little bit warmer where you live. But remember, if, the, if things unfold as we expect, there'll be a lot of power lines going down, and despite an enormous army of people that are going to be out there to put them back up, they may be down for two or three days or maybe, maybe longer, so people will be without electricity. Any more questions? All right. Well, thank you very much.